Let's start with being able to get a beer at a football game. For that, we have Representative John Bell, the House Majority Leader, and Senator Rick Gunn, a Republican from Alamance County. I want to thank you both so much for joining the show. Thank so. You. This act is to authorize public colleges and universities to allow alcohol sales at stadiums, athletic facilities, and arenas located on the school property. Why should we be doing this? Well, well first of all, now you currently, you, you can't do it currently. So, so when you look at uh, some of the issues that we've had where the, the hurricanes are going to do one of the outdoor games, we've had to come into session and do special permits for those. This would eliminate that from happening, first of all. The, the, next, the next phase of this is is that uh, our private schools are already doing it. You look at Wake Forest, uh, Duke's taking advantage of it ever since the NCAA has lifted that, that, that ban. Uh, uh, Elon, one of the smaller private schools in the state, is taking advantage of it. And not only are they seeing revenue generated, but are actually seeing some of the safety issues being addressed as well. And, and certainly, if you've ever been to any sporting event, especially a football game, it's not like there's not already alcohol at these events. There's a ton of tailgating that's normally going on outside of the gates. That is correct, and um, while we don't expect that to necessarily stop, we really do believe that it will, uh, one, uh, stop some of the uh, potential binge drinking. Let's have one more before we go into the stadium. That way they can go into the stadium. Uh, we can control that environment. Um, usually when we do this, you'll send, tend to see a, a, a little bit bigger police presence, so we know that that will help. Uh, I have to tell you, Loretta, I never uh, remember going to a uh, Stones concert over at uh, Carter-Finley and uh, they didn't serve alcohol. Well, I can't tell you how many, many bottles were in the, uh, right. the restroom. So this is going to allow us to really give a uh, controlled uh, environment, and at the same time, we'll have a great game day experience. So questions that would be raised, does this increase accessibility? Does it make going to a game less safe for a family to go to the game if we're going to be selling alcohol at it? Well, that was one of the issues brought up and the questions brought up in the ABC committee. And, uh, and you know, this is, this is not an issue that we had just we jointly filed a bill on and took off. This is something we've been working on for, for six months to a year, not only inside the General Assembly, but also with our uh, university partners across the state. And we've, we've done research, and statistic after statistic, you look at Ohio State and West Virginia, um, decreases in alcohol-related instances have dropped. Uh, in West Virginia, the first year they implemented uh, alcohol sales out their football facility, you're looking at a 35% decrease uh, in alcohol-related instances. These, these are statistics by their own law enforcement police department. And, and it just shows that this is working not only, um, well, of course, at professional sports, but also across our, our university system, which is allowing this to happen. So do you have an indication from the UNC system schools? Do we expect schools to sign on to this right away if they are given this option? We contacted them through this process, and I'm pleased to tell you that uh, 15 out of the 16 uh, trustee chairmen have signed on in writing in full support of this. One thing I do like about this is, once again, not forcing it on anybody. You can choose what venues and at what time you think it's appropriate to have uh, alcohol sales. Otherwise, if you decide that there's a venue or a time that is not, that is strictly up to the uh, university system the, the, um, uh, in, in the different areas, and uh, that way I think they can they can make the better decision. So I think it's a good way to do this. So in our last time we had Representative McGrady on talking about his omnibus bill that mm -hmm. has a lot of different measures in it, including this one. He has put this into it. Um, we saw this bill pass out of the House pretty easily. It, it moved through through the House process. I would say North Carolina for a long time has had very strict alcohol mm -hmm. laws. Are, are we starting to see a little bit of a change in that? The, the well, need for moderate. Well, I think you are. Senator Gunn and I have partnered on a lot of uh, alcohol legislation over the years, but, but make no mistake, this moved easy through the House, but it was six months worth of work on the back end before um, when we're bringing in law enforcement, talking to campus police officers, talking with the university liaisons themselves, uh, seeing, seeing that, uh, you know, actually talking with some of the athletic coaches to see what they thought about, you know, how it could hurt or help the game day experience. So, so th this was not a, just a, an, an easy lift. Um, but, but, you know, we do the legislative process and we get the language correct. We had many versions of it. The, the version we all felt comfortable with and signed on to was the one that moved forward. And, uh, and we did the work behind the scenes and did the work um, before going into committee. And that's why you saw everybody okay with the language that we, we put in front of them. So it obviously now goes over to the Senate side. How, do you, how is this going to pro progress through the Senate, or how do you see it progressing? I, I see it moving uh, rather quickly. One of the big reasons is we want to make sure each university has a chance to, to 
put together what they think is the best practice to distribute this alcohol. We're, we're of course, in the midst of crossover in the Senate, so once we get the crossover provisions uh, done, we will start taking up more House bills. So I would expect this to move rather quickly so we can allow the universities time to prepare for their sales. And Loretta, that's the great thing about this legislation because it's not a one-size-fits-all type deal. Mm -hmm. You know, what works at NC State is not going to work at UNCW. What works at UNCW is not going to work at Appalachia State. So it allows the universities to implement or not to implement uh, as they see fit. So, uh, so it's, it's very, it's just putting the power back in the hands of the trustees at the university level. So does that also mean that they can pick which games that it would be used at? Well, you know, whatever they see fit, you know, whether okay. it be football, whether it be baseball, whether it be a combination of football, basketball, baseball, um, but you also have sports such as tennis, soccer, that, that, that it allows them to implement as they see necessary. In some places, uh, the university may not actually have the facility to be able to accommodate it. Right. Uh, you know, Universities like, say, UNC Greensboro, for example, they're in an off-site location. So, you know, this is already happening during their basketball season. But when they look at the other sports, baseball, et cetera, uh, they may be able to accommodate it there. So, um, so it allows the universities to, to implement as they see fit, which is the, the key part of making this successful. Okay. I could add, um, you know, right, right now, uh, if it's a non-athletic event, uh, you also are not a, able to have alcohol sales. And you look at some of the revenue we are potentially missing from a folks that want to have just a good event and a good venue, now we'll be able to offer some of our uh, university facilities for those type of events, too. Okay. I want to thank you both so much.